Hello and welcome to Church at Home. Thank you for joining us. One day, of course, we hope that we will be able to worship and learn and encourage one another in person. But for now, at least it's great that we can connect in this way. And I am delighted we can keep connected. And it's great when new people join us too. So can I say, if you are new, uh, if you've joined us recently on Church at Home, we're delighted that you can join us. And we really hope that you'll feel at home. Which, of course, you are because you're at home. But you know what I mean. (laughs) Anyway, uh, in Church at Home today, uh, we are going to be exploring Psalm 23. In a few minutes, we'll have it read to us and then an opportunity to mine its riches as Caroline teaches us from God's word. Then our talented musicians are going to help us sing God's praises as always, and there will be a time to pause and pray before the throne of Almighty God. Hi everyone, we hope you're keeping well. Now we're going to sing, Will You Let Me Be Your Servant? Let's worship together. This morning's reading is taken from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me besides quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. When I was a young child, I was told a story about my parents. When they were newly going out, they decided to go on a picnic. 
and they were sat on this hillside getting the food out when an inquisitive sheep came up and started nosing around. Now my father who wanted to impress and take control of the situation stood up and whacked the sheep hard on its backside hoping to encourage the sheep to wander off. Unfortunately on doing this a huge cloud of dust came out the sheep's wool and engulfed my mother who was sat on the ground. The sheep however stood resolutely to the spot and looked at my father as if to say what did you do that for? Apparently my mother found it hugely funny. My father wasn't so impressed it's not cool to be outwitted by a sheep. Psalm 23 is about a shepherd and his sheep a host and his guests. It is the most familiar psalm, maybe the most familiar passage in the Bible. And many of us may be able to recall at least a few of the words. But although it's familiar, let's be inquisitive. Let's nosy around again at these words and see if anything speaks to us afresh in these strange times of this second lockdown. This psalm is commonly turned to in the midst of death and dying and is often chosen for funeral services. I mentioned at other times when we need comfort and certainly many of us need comfort now. But this psalm is also clearly about living. It puts daily activities such as eating and drinking and seeking security in God as a central perspective. Let's unpack these verses a little. In the ancient world, kings were known as shepherds of their people. So right at the beginning of this psalm, the profession, the Lord is my shepherd, is to declare loyalty to God and an intention to live under God's reign. It was the responsibility of kings to provide for and protect their people. The psalm is written by David. His childhood occupation was a shepherd. And it isn't clear exactly when in David's life it was written, but it's thought likely to be in his later years as he's talking about God's presence in changing circumstances. David had personally known poverty and hardship and anguish and rejection and betrayal. If it was written when he was king, he was looking back and remembering God's care and provision. It's a psalm of two halves. The first half looks at God as our shepherd and us as his sheep and the second half as God as the host and us as the, as the guests at his table and the dwellers in his house. We're going to unpack the psalm by considering four headings about what God does. The first, he provides and restores. The second, he guides. The third, he accompanies. And the fourth, he provides and pursues. So the first one, provides and restores. In verses one to four, we have the analogy of the divine shepherd leading his flock. And it's personal. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Pastures, if you're sheep, means food. To be led beside still waters is to drink. It says, He restores my soul. A while ago, I was thinking about how to portray the soul when I was writing a piece about how the brain and the heart and the soul relate to each other. Now, I find it quite easy to work out what my brain does. That's that's what I think, my heart, that's what I feel. 
For my soul, how would I describe my soul? And it's hard to describe fully in words, but I think it's something to do with the essence of being me. It holds the muddle of everything I am and everything I was created to be. At a personal level, I saw the soul as cradling the fingerprint of God on the inside of me. So when it says he restores my soul, I think it's got something to do with restoring us, bringing us back to the people we were created to be. So the second point, he guides. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. God leads us in the right paths so we'll find our way through in the circumstances we are in. It doesn't say he leads us in easy paths or clear paths, just paths of righteousness where he's directing the way we should go. And it's interesting that paths are plural here because actually we're often walking many paths at the same time. There may be this challenge and that challenge. And sometimes these paths are pleasant, like many of us have been walking the footpaths of Nailsea during lockdown. We found some new ones, you may have done too, and they're beautiful. But sometimes it's tough paths and it's difficult and it's rocky and it's steep. But there isn't a path that we walk on our own. The Holy Spirit guides us in whatever path we're on. And then it says, for his name's sake. He guides us in a way that bears witness to God's character. He guides us as a God who is faithful and loving because that is who he is. Number three, accompanies. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. When circumstances are tough and the threat is real, the Psalm says, remember that the Lord is our shepherd. Trust that the shepherd's provision is enough. The rod and the staff while being shepherds implements also signify royal authority. Monarchs are given a ceremonial staff known as a scepter at their coronation, which signifies the power bestowed on them. The word scepter is related to the Greek verb to lean on, to prop up. We fear no evil because God is with us. We can lean on him. But it's much easier to talk about this than actually to do it when circumstances are against us and we find ourselves in our own valleys. And I don't want to deny the struggles that we all go through at times. And sometimes it's entirely appropriate to have some sense of foreboding in the future because it's rarely only hope that we're looking forward to. And today the reality is that this pandemic is a valley for many. And you may also be in a valley for other reasons right now. This is the time to recall God's promises and the story of his faithfulness in scripture. We may be able to recall specific examples of when we've known God's faithfulness in our own lives or we've seen that in others. This is the time to reach out to God and to others so that you don't walk your valley alone and know that the Holy Spirit accompanies us even in those times when we do not feel it. When faced with real difficulty, which isn't going to be quickly resolved, sometimes I find it easier to break down what I'm asking for. 
and to pray at the beginning of the day, please Lord, see me through today. And just believing for the present when there's difficulties in the future is enough. And then to repeat that prayer daily. So number four, provide and pursues. In this second half of the psalm, in verses five and six, we have a different image, one of being in a house. We see God as the host and us as the guests and dwellers in his house. The gracious host does what the shepherd did for his sheep. He gives them food, he gives them drink and shelter and protection. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. It talks about this in the present tense. God provides our needs, whatever our circumstances. He provides needs in our conflicts. He provides needs and for our needs when things are good. God is here. Tomorrow, whatever it brings, will not take away God's love and God's care. And it says to be in the house of the Lord. It brings a communal dimension to this psalm. These are words for us as individuals, but they're words for us as the community of God, our church family. We won't dwell in God's house on our own. And then it says, God's goodness and love will follow. And it uses a Hebrew verb which implies a more active pursuit rather than just following on. When I go out with my two-year-old grandson, I need to know where he is. He is a delightful adventurer, but he has no sense and an inflated view of his own ability. And often he's holding my hand, but if we're somewhere where more freedom is safe, then he can, I let him walk on his own. But my gaze follows him and I am in active pursuit. And sometimes he'll hide behind a tree like this and he'll think, Nanny can't see me, Nanny can't see me. But in reality, I can see him. I know exactly where he is. He is always in my gaze because I want to protect him and nurture him and encourage him and look after him because I love him. And in the same way, God is in active pursuit of us. He provides and he pursues us. He wants that relationship. He cares for what we're going through. We are always in his gaze. So in these last verses, we also have the food, the rest, the journey, the challenges. We have as before the memory of the past faithfulness and the present experience of the faithfulness of God giving us hope for the future. And we know that whatever path we walk, whatever valley we may have to pass through, we will end up with peace in the Father's house. These verses have taken us through seeing how the Lord our shepherd provides and restores. 
He guides, he accompanies, and he provides, and he pursues us. So holding these verses today, what, where do we stand? As always with scripture, it is, up, it is up to each one of us to make our own personal response to what these words say to us. In our consumer-orientated society today, it is a radical challenge to hold the message of verse 1. I shall not be in want, I lack nothing because the Lord is my shepherd. We have a culture that encourages people to want everything. We see that particularly at this time of year coming up to Christmas when the adverts kind of imply your life would be better if you had all these things in them. We're encouraged to trust first ourselves and work out in securing our own futures, something that is challenged at the very roots during this pandemic with the loss of control. How can I keep myself safe for an invisible threat, from an invisible threat? What if my finances are challenged? What if I get it? What about my health? There are lots of questions right now that are crowding in. This psalm encourages us to live humbly and gratefully as a child of God. To seek to trust the Lord who provides, who restores, who guides, who accompanies, who provides and pursues us again and again. It is a psalm, as we said before, to be heard in the midst of dying and death when we seek comfort in those difficult places. But it's a psalm about living and hope and reassurance that God is with us, that he loves us deeply. It is a psalm for the, this pandemic. It is a psalm for today, for tomorrow, and all our tomorrows. Shall we pray together? Dear Lord, please restore us to be the people we were created to be. Please guide us and accompany us in the way ahead. May our hearts be open to receive your love. In Jesus' name, amen. So the question I would like to leave you with is, what would it mean for God to restore my soul? What would it mean for me for God to restore my soul. Goodness restores my
In our prayers today, we remember the words of the psalm we have just heard about as we remember our world, our nation, our church and its people. As we consider the state of our world, we thank you for the real progress that has been made in producing a possible vaccine for the coronavirus. We pray, Father, for the many scientists and medical specialists that you will continue to unlock their skills to progress even further. You've, we thank you for those in the National Health Service who have been working so hard to care for us all. And we pray that there will be adequate resources to administer the vaccine when the time comes. We pray, Father, that the current lockdown will reduce the spread of the virus and that the number of those who sadly succumb to it will cease. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are struggling to cope with the lockdown, for the students trapped in isolation and worrying about the possible prospects of being at home at Christmas and especially for those living alone. Help us, Lord, to know how best to help the lonely. We pray too for our schools as they continue the best they can against the worry of the virus. Please protect the teachers, staff and pupils and help them to ensure the education of our young people continues at its normal high standard under such difficult circumstances. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Father, against the uncertainties and challenges that face many countries, including our own, all around the world. We pray particularly for the USA, that the outcome of the presidential election will soon be resolved. For the people of Hong Kong, as they fight for democracy in their country. For our near neighbours in Europe, who with ourselves continue with the uncertainties of Brexit, and we pray for a fair and just outcome of the current negotiations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Close to home, we pray for the ongoing ministry here at Holy Trinity. We pray for James and the team, now with the added problem of some of the staff being furloughed. With Christmas not too far off, we pray that your Holy Spirit will guide and inspire them in their plans. And now for a few moments, as we think of those we know who are in special need at this time, we pray for the sick, the bereaved and the lonely. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are the Good Shepherd who provides for us, cares for us, restores us, guides us, and by your Spirit is always with us, no matter what valley we are in. Help us to trust you regardless of the circumstances which surround us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now let us all join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, don't forget that although our services are currently suspended and not happening, there is still an opportunity for private prayer, should you wish to take advantage of that. So the church building is open on Sundays and Wednesdays between 11am and 12.30pm. You don't need to book, you can just come down and enjoy the space and the peace and a time to pray. And talking of prayer, we're looking forward to a Lockdown Prayer, which is a prayer initiative for later in November. It's going to be held over two days. That's the 25th and the 26th of November. So Wednesday and a Thursday. And Lockdown Prayer is an opportunity for us to come before God as a church and commit to him our, our world, our country, our community, our church and people we know who are struggling and just bring it all before him in two days of sustained prayer. Now, we won't be able to do it because of lockdown quite as easily as we might um, earlier, but we are going to be able to still pray wherever we are. So there will be an opportunity to sign up for slots when you on your own, or maybe with others in your household, you could commit to praying. And there'll be more information to follow. So watch this space and look out for more information on the church news sheet. But as we finish, let's bring to mind the opening words of Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. Whatever encouragements you've taken from God's word today, may they feed and sustain you in the week to come. And may God bless you with a deeper understanding of his immense care for you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Goodbye and God bless.
This place here out with praise Can you hear it? The sound of heaven touching Spirit break out, break our walls down. Spirit break out, heaven come down. Spirit break out, break our walls down. Spirit break out, heaven come down. Break our walls, break our walls, break our walls down. Spirit break out. Heaven come down. Spirit break out. Lift your voice, lift your voice, lift your voice now. In autumn, we enjoy a roaring fire. 